Trading is really hard, but sometimes it's easy. And you really want to survive for when it's easy because it's, it does get easy at times, but that's certainly not the, the case all the time. I have a very strict routine. I go to bed every night at 10 o'clock, right? I don't usually don't stay up later than 10 o'clock um, because I need about eight hours sleep. And um, I'll wake up around six the next morning. And from six o'clock, I literally will go and uh, I'll drink the same thing every morning. I go down a big glass of water, I squeeze a lemon in it. And I drink just a big glass of lemon water. I go back up, I basically do some stretches, some meditation, and then I turn my charts on, right? And once I'm in the right state of mind to be able to face the markets, realizing that I'm calm, I'm relaxed, I'm not anxious, I'm not overly um, tired, I get myself in a good state of mind, then I turn my charts on. And then I start to deal with all the information that comes in. And so by the time the market opens, uh, by the time, well, Forex opens earlier than that, but, you know, usually there's 8.30 reports out. So if I get up at 6, I'm usually ready to go for those 8.30 reports to take advantage of that 8.30 report. Give myself two and a half hours to get ready. And I'm going to tell you something. Um, if you just wake up, turn your charts on, you are in so much trouble. The emotion is just going to come in. So many things are gonna start bar barraging you and it's just gonna be, and again, like the power of habit says, you know, once you break that little habit, you're out of your, you're out of your routine. Now you're like a, a boxer who is now wrestling. You practiced all this boxing, but now you're wrestling and you're like, what do I do, right? So <laughs> it's really super, super important that you develop the right habits and routines I'm a big, big, big believer in that. It used to be, for a long time, it was get up at 6 a.m. and trade for eight to 10 hours in front of the screen. Got sick of that, um, got older and just didn't want to do that as much, it's a grind. But I had to do it when I was younger to make money and now that I've kind of padded myself and done better and ha don't have to do that as much, I've kind of moved into more of a, I would say, intuitive, artistic type day where I get up, I look at the market, I usually have something on, I check the news, I see is there any stupid news, is there anything that's kind of popping up on my radar, is it a busy enough day to be day trading, which usually no right now, but if it is, I'll, I'll be in there, like Federal Reserve, um, maybe the unemployment report, stuff like that. And then um, it's just kind of wait and see, so it's go on a walk, I keep my news service on, I read a book, listen to a book on my walk, I go work out, I have lunch. I play with my kid a little, but I'm still kind of paying attention. And, but I'm not actively trying to do something all day. I'm just, I have a group of small cap stock people that I kind of keep an eye on too. So I'm just kind of overseeing a bunch of different things. And I kind of know enough now when one of them pulls me in that I need to focus. So that's kind of the game for me going to the next level moving forward. It's working more that way instead of kind of being a hound dog and staring at my chart all day. It's a little different now. I love a routine. <laughs> I love a schedule. Uh, so I get up, I have a cup of tea, cigarette. <laughs> then I come to the charts and um, the first thing I do in the morning is I will log all my previous day's results of the trade so I can keep my spreadsheets up to date because that for me is super crucial. Um, and then I will see the, what the overnight movement has been like on the DAX. Um, then I'll decide my stop loss for the day uh, based on the overnight movement um, because I have varying stop losses depending upon the movement. And then I just wait for the, I've got a couple of mechanical strategies that kick in at seven o'clock and another one at eight o'clock, but I don't actually manually trade until maybe quarter past eight, 20 past eight, because the DAX in the morning can be very choppy at eight o'clock on the, the UK opening. It can be very choppy. So I, I like to stay out of, of the action until it's calmed down again. And then I just sit there until about and, and trade. Um, or if it's a very flat day, nothing really happening, no setups, then I'll, I'll do some back testing. 
or I'll do some analysis of back testing, or I'll work with the students obviously in the room. Then at a quarter to 12, that's the end of my manual trading until 1.30 in the afternoon. So I take a, a good break for lunch, uh, and then I come back and repeat the process in the afternoon. It's very simple routine, but it works. Not, nothing's changed for the last 20 years. I just, you know, get my data, run my models, update my positions. Uh, I get my newsletters out. I um, help my students. And um, I'm usually finished by about, you know, nine o'clock in the morning, Sydney time. I'm really fortunate because, you know, the sun rises or the day starts. Technically, I suppose New Zealand is the first, you know, country that wakes, wakes up. But Sydney, we're, we're the second country that, you know, opens up. And we open up after North America has closed. And so I sit in a really good you know, time zone. But, um, you know, when I wake up, basically, uh, North America is closed. So, you know, it, I can collect all my data and put all my orders in basically before Asia opens. I do that for the next 24 hours. Yeah, so I'm basically finished by just after 9 a.m. Sydney time most days. And, you know, I read a lot during the day, feel enthusiastic. You know, I'll, I'll do, you know, I'll have an idea in my mind and I'll, I'll research. Yeah, my, my kids are still young, so I'm still involved in running their, their sporting teams and managing their sporting teams. And I'm quite flexible in my time. Every trader starts out wanting to experience freedom in their lives. So they want their financial freedom, so that they can have the time freedom, so they can have the choice, uh, the freedom of choice, right? However, in order to get to that point of freedom, we actually need to earn that freedom, right? We need to become highly organized first. We actually need to do the opposite of what we want to do, what we want to experience. You've got to have the motivation to do what needs to be done. I always say to people, you know, if you're not doing what you think you should be doing, what are you doing instead? I think it's a really important question because, you know, we're, all, we're making choices all the time. We're either, you know, we're either getting into the trade or not getting into the trade. We're either doing the, anal the analysis or we're not doing the analysis. But if I'm not doing my analysis, what am I doing with my time instead? Because that might just reflect that actually there's other things in life that are also really important. And if I'm trying to fit trading into my life, then it's a balancing of all the things that are important to me that I've got to try and manage. And I've only got limited time and I've only got limited energy. So how do I balance that all out into an effective way? Uh, which is really important. I think, you know, just energy is key to discipline. You know, if people are fatigued, the research is pretty clear that, you know, when we're tired and fatigued, um, we don't have the same level of self-control as we would normally have. Um, self-control is a high order um, brain function and it requires energy. And when we're low in energy, we just don't have the capacity to manage ourselves as well. So we're much more likely to, you know, not put the effort uh, all the time or have the ability to restrain ourselves. So. Uh, at the basic level, probably physiologically, you know, being energized or not being too fatigued or too stressed is critical for being disciplined. And then maybe, you know, sense of purpose, goals, you know, those things can kind of get a little bit of extra commitment. And I think, you know, also thinking about, you know, why you're doing, why it's important, uh, and who you want to be, you know, the values um, can be good ways to kind of leverage commitment such that discipline is, is for me, it's it's easy when we're energized and it's easy when we're motivated and it's easy when we are confident and when we're happy but we're not like that all the time so it's what can we tap into that enables us to take action even when it's difficult to do that you know maybe we're tired or we're, we're feeling you know we're, we're a bit stressed or we're a bit anxious but we're going to do it anyway and i think that's where you know the, the purpose and the values and the mission maybe that deeper level part of the mental framework becomes really important the two chief weapons against risk of ruin is a, a positive expectancy strategy and good money management. You suddenly realize that you have to trade very small compared to your risk capital. So suddenly when you start trading correctly, you find the losses aren't a big deal. They're just, they're just irritants, right? Because you're trading really small compared to your uh, risk capital. So first of all, once you understand risk of drawing and how money management is really important at keeping that zero percent, you're risking less money. So I think it makes it easier for people to lose. If when they are losing, they're losing small. 
Now, nothing I do is that I'm a pessimist. And so I always expect to lose when I'm trading. So I'll always debit my P&L by my, my stop amount, my risk amount, before I actually place the trade. And so I'm already down money before the markets open up. And what you do is you take the power of what the market can do to your yourself, you take that power, or that the market can, you know, smacks you down because you're losing, you take the power away from the market because, you know what, you've already said to yourself, I'm gonna lose before I, I trade because, you know, on my P&L today, I'm, I'm, I'm down X percent. That's how much I'm risking today. I expect to lose X percent and that's my account balance. And suddenly you see, yeah, you have lost, right? And, and when you do that, you don't mind putting your trade in because the pain, you've already taken the pain, taken a sting away from the market. So two things, one, understand risk of ruin. So you, you reduce your bet size, so you're losing small. And then secondly, before you place your trades with your broker or before you enter them online, debit your p &L spreadsheet with what you expect to lose that day, okay? Embrace the loss. And so it takes all that negative power away away from the, the market and you, you take control.